Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this complete CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lecture, you'll learn about the different ether channel protocols and how to configure and verify them. So there's three available protocols, that's LACP and PAGP and static. So first one is LACP, the link aggregation control protocol. This is an open standard, so it's supported on all vendor switches. With LACP, the switches on both sides negotiate the port channel creation and maintenance. And of the three available methods, this is the preferred one to use. Next one we have is PAGP, which is Cisco's proprietary port aggregation protocol. This works similarly to LACP, where the switches on both sides again negotiate the port channel creation and maintenance, but it's not recommended to use PAGP because it's proprietary. And the third option we have is to configure a static ether channel. With static, the switches do not negotiate creation and maintenance, but the settings must still match on both sides for the port channel to come up. So with all three, you've got two switches that have got links going between them, and you're going to configure those into a port channel. You need to configure the same settings on both sides, on both switches. And for static, this is the one that we'll use if LACP is not supported on both sides. LACP will be supported on all Cisco switches, but maybe you're connecting to another vendor switch or a server or something like that. So those are the three different options. The configuration for them all is really, really similar. They all actually use the same command, which is the channel group command but it's on the keywords that we use along with channel group that decides which of the three protocols is going to be used. For the parameters for ether channels, I touched on this just a minute ago where I said that the configuration has to match on both sides of the link. The interfaces need to have a matching configuration. So settings that have to be the same on both sides include the speed and duplex, whether the port is set to access or trunk mode, the native VLAN, the allowed VLANs on there, and the access VLAN if it's an access port. So looking at the configuration now, first one we'll look at is LACP. Your LACP interfaces can be set as either active or passive. So let's say we're going to configure a port channel between switch 1 and switch 2. If switch 1's interfaces are set as active and switch 2's as passive, the port channel will come up. But if both sides are set as passive, the port channel will not come up. And if both sides are active, the port channel will come up. So it's recommended to configure both sides as active. Your choices are either both sides as active or one side is active and one side is passive. It's easiest just to configure both as active because then you don't need to worry about which is the active side and which is the passive side. So here's our configuration. It's configured at the interface level. So specify the interfaces you want to group into the port channel. Here we're saying interface range fast 0 slash 23 to 24. And then our command is channel group 1 mode active. As soon as you enter that command, it will create a new logical interface, which is your port channel interface. Here we're configuring channel group 1, so that would create port channel 1. The reason that there's a number here is that you might have different port channels going to different neighbor switches. So say that we are switch 1, we've got a port channel going to switch 2, we could make that port channel 1. If we've also got a port channel going to switch 3, we could make that port channel 2. 
So that's the command to create your part channel. After the part channel has been created, most of your interface settings are set at the part channel level. So to do that, we say interface part channel one, and then switch part mode trunk. We would also set the native VLAN, the allowed VLANs, etc., at this level. And you need to configure those matching settings on the switch on the other side as well. So you see that the configuration here is exactly the same. We did it first on switch one, and then we do a matching configuration on switch two. So that was LACP. So with LACP, it's channel group command, and then you use either active or passive. The configuration for PAGP is the same, but rather than using active or passive, we use desirable or auto. And it's similar rules that we had with LACP, where if one side is desirable and the other is auto, then the part channel will come up. If both sides are auto, it won't. And if both sides are desirable, it will. So again, if you are going to use PAGP, which is not recommended, then set both sides as desirable. Then you don't need to worry about which is desirable and which is auto. So looking at the config, exactly the same as it was for LACP. But here we say channel group one mode desirable rather than channel one channel group one mode active so you can tell by the keyword at the end where whether it's going to be lacp or pagp or when we get to the next slide static for static again it's exactly the same configuration but we say channel group one mode on okay, so active for lacp desirable for pagp and on for static rest of the configuration exactly the same for all of them so that's how we configure it how we verify it, really there's one Swiss Army knife command for checking ether channel, which is show ether channel summary. And you see the flags just under there, so it tells you what all the letters actually mean here. Looking down at the bottom, we can see that this is group one, our first port channel. The port channel interface is port channel one, and in brackets, I see a capital S and a capital U. The capital S means that it's a layer two port channel. You can also configure a layer three port channel as well. That's where on the interface you would say no switch port and put an IP address on there. But more commonly, it's going to be a layer two port channel. The capital U means it's in use, which basically means that it is up. I can see that the protocol is LACP, and over on the right, I can see that my ports are FAST0 slash 23 and FAST0 slash 24. A capital P means that they are in the port channel. For a layer two port channel, if you see any letters other than exactly what you see here, there's a problem with the port channel and it's not going to come up. If there is a problem with your port channel, by far the most common issue is that your settings do not match on both sides. So look at the interface, both at the physical interface level and also at the port channel interface level as well, and just make sure that the settings are exactly the same on both sides. Also make sure that you've selected the correct interfaces that are cabled to each other as well. Okay, so that was our, our show ether channel summary command. You can also do a show ether channel enter. That will give you more verbose output, but summary really tells you everything that you need to know. The last command to look at is show spanning tree VLAN. Because as we explained before, the reason for using ether channel is to is to avoid spanning trees shutting down some of your links. So after you've configured this, you want to check that spanning tree is working as you would like. So the example here is before we've configured ether channel. If you look at the picture over on the right, we've got a switch access three with uplinks going to our switch CD1, the core distribution one. CD1 is the root bridge for spanning tree. And if we look at access three, it's got two links going up to CD1. If we don't put those in a port channel, then spanning tree sees them as a potential loop and it's going to block on one of the links. Looking at the output of our show spanning tree VLAN one command here, if I look down on the bottom, I can see that fast zero slash 23 is forwarding. It's the root port on access three and fast zero slash 24 is blocking to prevent the loop. So these are fast ethernet interfaces in our 
for example, I'm only getting 100 meg of uplink bandwidth rather than 200 meg with my two ports. So to fix that, we configure ether channel. After you have configured ether channel, we can put the same command in again, show spanning tree VLAN one, and now, if I go back a slide, before the port channel, you see that spanning tree saw the physical interfaces, fast 0 slash 23 and fast 0 slash 24. When we put those into a port channel, spanning tree just sees that one logical interface. So it sees it as being one link, which is not a potential loop as far as spanning tree is concerned. So now on the port channel, it is forwarding. I don't have any ports that are blocking. I get the full bandwidth of both physical interfaces now. Okay, so that was our configuration and verification. See you in the next lecture. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp by clicking the link above my head or in the description. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.